The ticking of the grandfather clock echoed through the wood-paneled office. Dr. Leo Grant leaned forward in his leather chair, peering over his glasses at the troubled young man on the couch across from him. Tell me, Andrew, what happened that night, Dr. Grant asked gently. The patient fidgeted with the hem of his shirt, eyes downcast. I don't remember, he mumbled. Dr. Grant suppressed a sigh. They'd had this conversation many times before. He knew Andrew was lying, hiding some dark secret from that fateful night two weeks ago. But he couldn't force the young man to open up before he was ready. As Andrew continued to avoid his gaze, Dr. Grant's thoughts turned inward. He understood all too well the urge to bury one's pain deep inside. If anyone discovered his own shameful history with addiction, it would destroy everything he had built these last twenty years. A lifetime of helping others could be wiped out in an instant. He was startled from his reverie by the buzz of the intercom on his desk. Dr. Grant, there's a Detective Sanchez here to see you. She says it's urgent. Dr. Grant frowned, smoothing his tie. This was highly irregular. Please send her in, he responded after a moment. The heavy oak door swung open, and a petite woman strode purposefully into the room, flashing a badge at Dr. Grant. Her dark, assessing eyes took in the scene before coming to rest on Andrew. My name is Detective Rebecca Sanchez. I'm with the 24th Precinct. She held out her hand to Dr. Grant. He shook it rising from his chair. To what do I owe the pleasure? Detective Grant asked. There was an edge in his voice he couldn't quite conceal. Sanchez glanced at Andrew again before replying cryptically. It's about the Brighton case. I have some questions, if you have a moment. Dr. Grant paled slightly. Brighton had been Andrew's closest friend before his apparent suicide two weeks prior. Grant had a feeling this was more than just a courtesy call. Of course, Detective. Andrew, I'm afraid we'll have to cut our session short. Andrew hurried out with barely a nod, clearly unnerved by the detective's presence. Grant watched him go before turning to face Sanchez. He had a sinking feeling his carefully constructed world was about to come crashing down. Dr. Grant gestured for Detective Sanchez to take a seat opposite his desk. She perched on the edge of the leather chair, back ramrod straight. How can I help you, Detective Grant asked evenly, folding his hands on the desk. Sanchez's dark eyes bored into him. Let's cut to the chase, Dr. Grant. We have evidence that Mr. Brighton's death was not a suicide. In fact, we believe he was murdered. Grant inhaled sharply. Murdered? That's dot 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 shocking. What evidence do you have? I can't disclose the details just yet. But we have reason to believe his death is connected to a larger conspiracy Sanchez leaned forward intently. Conspiracy that some of your patients may be involved in. Grant's brows shot up in surprise. Surely you don't think, Andrew. I'm not at liberty to say Sanchez interrupted. She fixed him with a piercing look. But I get the feeling you know more than you're letting on, Doctor. Grant's mouth went dry. She couldn't possibly know about the society, could she? He had been so careful to cover his tracks over the years. I assure you, Detective, I want to help in any way I can, he said evenly. But you'll have to enlighten me as to how my patients are involved. Sanchez studied him a moment, as if weighing how much to reveal. Finally, she said, let's just say Mr. Brighton's death appears dot 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 ritualistic in nature. A chill went down Grant's spine. The society's work, no doubt. He hesitated, unsure how to proceed. Should he come clean? But if he did, his life's work would be destroyed. I'm afraid I can't help you, he said quietly. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have patience to see. Sanchez's eyes darkened. She knew he was hiding something. This was only the beginning. Dr. Grant stared at the files spread across his desk, the light from his desk lamp casting shadows across the pages. Photographs of bruised arms and vacant eyes peered up at him, evidence of unthinkable cruelty inflicted upon the vulnerable. A knock at his office door startled him from his thoughts. Come in, he called out, gathering the files into a stack and slipping them into his briefcase. Detective Sanchez entered, her usual confident stride replaced by hesitant steps. Dark circles rimmed her eyes, betraying countless sleepless nights spent pursuing this dangerous truth. Are you ready, doctor, she asked. We don't have much time before they realize we're onto them. Dr. Grant nodded, clutching his briefcase tighter. I'm ready. Let's end this nightmare. Together they slipped into the night, two unlikely allies driven by justice. As the car sped along the rain, slicked streets. Dr. Grant gazed out the window, doubts creeping into his mind. What if they had underestimated the enemy? What if his troubled past compromised the mission? 
Beside him, Detective Sanchez's knuckles whitened on the steering wheel, her jaw clenched with determination. Dr. Grant envied her resolve. Here in the shadows on the brink of war, he needed her strength. This was at the point of no return. Dr. Grant steeled himself, burying his doubts. Too much was at stake. Failure was not an option. Detective Sanchez pulled the car into a deserted parking garage, the headlights cutting through the inky darkness. She killed the engine and turned to Dr. Grant. This is it. Charlotte will meet us on the third floor. Dr. Grant nodded, his mouth dry. They stepped out into the damp concrete structure, their footsteps echoing eerily. A slim figure detached from the shadows ahead. You must be Charlotte, Detective Sanchez said, extending her hand. I'm Detective Sanchez. This is Dr. Grant. Charlotte's grip was surprisingly strong, her blue eyes direct. We don't have much time. My access to the organization's network is limited. We need to move quickly. She led them to a nondescript sedan, popping the trunk to reveal an array of tactical gear. Bulletproof vests, encrypted phones, flash drives the tools of infiltration. I know what you're up against, Charlotte said grimly. You'll need every advantage. I can get you inside, but after that you're on your own. Dr. Grant strapped on a vest with shaking hands. Detective Sanchez checked her gun with practiced ease. Tell us what we need to know, she said. Charlotte's words came rapid fire. Underground labs harvesting DNA. Human test subjects. Dangerous, unregulated experiments. Horror grew in Dr. Grant's gut. After Charlotte issued terse instructions on bypassing security protocols, hacking databases, the roles they must play to avoid detection. Dr. Grant's head spun. Were they ready for this? But one look at Detective Sanchez's face crushed all doubt. She would triumph or die trying. And she would not die alone. Dr. Grant's heart pounded as the trio approached the gleaming facility. Charlotte had gotten them access cards and lab coats, but their forged IDs still felt flimsy. He kept his head down, avoiding the gaze of passing scientists. The sterile halls and heavy security gave no hint of the horrors within. What fresh abominations would they uncover? Beside him, Detective Sanchez was cool and alert, missing nothing. Charlotte led them to a locked door. This is as far as I can take you, she whispered. The lab is through there. Download everything you can, she handed them a flash drive. Good luck. With a deep breath, Dr. Grant swiped his card. The door slid open. Rows of computers and medical equipment filled the room, along with glass chambers holding dot 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 test subjects. His stomach churned. A voice cut through the silence. You're not authorized to be here, a man emerged, stylishly dressed, with oily charm. Victor Alvarez. Detective Sanchez stepped forward. We were just transferred. Got lost on the way. I know every employee here, Alvarez's eyes were flinty. Who are you? Dr. Grant's mind raced. How could they bluff their way out of this? He had to buy time, keep Alvarez talking. There's been a misunderstanding, he began smoothly. We're with the Oversight Committee, on a surprise inspection. The sterile light of the interrogation room flickered hesitantly above, casting long shadows that seemed to dance in rhythm with Dr. Leo Grant's pounding heart. Across the obdurate metal table, Victor Alvarez sat with his trademark grin, a facade of calmness that belied the gravity of their clandestine meeting. Victor Dr. Grant began, his voice steady despite the adrenaline coursing through his veins. I've seen the damage your organization is causing innocent lives twisted and broken. Victor's eyes, dark and calculating, locked onto Dr. Grant's with an intensity that could wither weaker wills. But Dr. Grant held firm, a rock amidst the storm of Victor's charisma. Unethical? Dangerous Victor let out a soft chuckle, a sound that skittered across Dr. Grant's resolve like fingernails on slate. Those are strong accusations, Doctor. And if they were true, what makes you think I would help you? Because Dr. Grant leaned in closer, the air between them charged with the weight of unspoken truths, deep down you know it's not about power or control. It's about doing what's right. Silence stretched between them, as taut as a wire pulled to its limit. Right and wrong, Victor mused, his voice dropping to a whisper that seemed to carry the burden of countless secrets, are luxuries for those who can afford them. Can you afford the consequences Dr. Grant countered, piercing Victor's armor with a gaze that was both an accusation and a plea? Can any of us? Victor's smile faltered, and for a fleeting moment, the mask slipped, revealing a glimmer of the conflict within. The room's chill air became a vortex, sucking away the bravado and leaving behind a man wrestling with the shadows of his own ambition. 
All right, Dr. Victor relented with a resigned exhale, his shoulders sagging as if shedding the weight of his previous convictions. I'll help you uncover more information. But we tread dangerous ground. Then we tread together, Dr. Grant affirmed, feeling a shard of victory piercing the dread that had settled in his chest. But even as he grasped this newfound alliance, he couldn't shake the sense that the path ahead was lined with unseen perils. As the two men rose from their seats, the stark light above flickered once more casting their dual shadows against the wall a portentous silhouette of an uncertain alliance forged in the crucible of necessity. The door to the hidden laboratory groaned open, a sound that seemed to echo with the cries of secrets long interred within its sterile walls. The scent of antiseptic was strong enough to mask the deeper, more unsettling odors of fear and suffering that lingered like ghosts. Stay sharp, Detective Sanchez whispered, her hand on her holster as they entered the clandestine space. Her eyes darted from one corner to another, every muscle tensed in anticipation of what they might find. Dr. Grant's gaze swept across the room, taking in the rows of high-tech equipment that hummed with an eerie vitality. Each console and screen pulsated with data, their purpose inscrutable yet undeniably sinister. It was a place where science had been subverted, where knowledge served darker ends. Look at this Victor's voice trailed off as he held up a sheaf of papers, his hands trembling slightly. Project Mind's Eye Experiments in Cerebral Dominance and Synaptic Manipulation. Rebecca moved closer, her expression hardening as she read over Victor's shoulder. Mind Control. They're engineering human puppets. More than just that Dr. Grant murmured, his heart racing not only from the horror of their discovery but from the proximity to Rebecca. They're erasing identities, rewriting souls. It's monstrous. Their eyes met, the gravity of their find bonding them in a moment of shared revulsion and resolve. In the midst of the clinical coldness that surrounded them, a warmth sparked to life a recognition of kindred spirits fighting against the same darkness. Leo Rebecca said softly, a vulnerability breaking through her usually imperturbable facade. What they're doing here, it's beyond illegal. It's evil, he finished for her, the word tasting bitter on his tongue. We have to stop it. She nodded, her hand reaching out to squeeze his arm, the gesture small but laden with significance. Together she affirmed, her dark eyes holding his. And in that touch, that look, something shifted between them. They were no longer just allies in a mission, they were partners in a deeper sense, their cause uniting them in a way that transcended the professional boundaries they had maintained until now. Let's gather all the evidence we can, Rebecca said, steeling herself once more for the task at hand. We'll need solid proof to expose them and end this nightmare. Agreed, Dr. Grant replied, his own determination bolstered by her presence. For the victim's sake, we can't afford to fail. As they worked side by side, documenting the horrors perpetrated in that lab, the seed of romance took root amidst the chaos. It was a connection born of shared convictions and the raw intensity of their circumstances a light kindled in the encroaching dark. The chill of the laboratory's stale air prickled Dr. Grant's skin as he peered through the microscope a grotesque ballet of manipulated cells unfolding beneath the lens. Beside him, Rebecca's shadow loomed, her presence a silent storm of resolve against the inhumanity sprawled in cold steel and glass around them. Got something he muttered, about to slide the evidence into his pocket when the unmistakable click of a safety being disengaged echoed through the sterile silence. The sound was deceptively soft for the harbinger of betrayal it proved to be. Step away from the table, both of you Victor's voice, once an allies now cut through the room with chilling authority. Rebecca's hand instinctively reached for her sidearm, but it was gone. In a flash of realization, Dr. Grant remembered the light brush against his hip earlier the fleeting contact he'd dismissed as incidental closeness. Victor's devilish grin had been a mask all along, concealing machinations as dark as the slicked back hair on his head. Victor, what is this? Dr. Grant's voice was steady, but his heart thundered betrayal in his chest. The inevitable, my dear Dr. Victor said, stepping into the light, the gun unflinching in his grip. You see, while you played at Heroes, I orchestrated a symphony of control. This technology. He gestured broadly at the equipment that filled the lab will change the world, and I will be its conductor. Change the world. By enslaving minds, Rebecca's accusation was a blade thrown with precision, but Victor merely twirled it away with a flick of disdain. Empires are not built upon the meek, Detective Sanchez Victor retorted. To harness power, one must first seize it. You've provided me a service, unwittingly, uncovering the flaws in my operation so they can be rectified. Damn it, Victor. 
People aren't pawns, Dr. Grant's outburst was a mixture of anger and despair. He thought of the victims, their autonomy stolen, reduced to mere vessels of someone else's will. Ah, but therein lies the beauty of evolution, Doctor. We elevate ourselves from the chaos, or we become part of it, Victor declared, his eyes alight with a fervor that bordered on fanaticism. Evolution doesn't involve shackles, Victor Rebecca snapped back, her fury a reflection of her betrayed trust. Consider yourselves lucky witnesses to the birth of a new order, Victor continued, unfazed. You'll have the best seats in the house, after all. Comfortably secured, of course. With a swift motion, Victor signaled to unseen accomplices. Shadows coalesced into forms, henchmen who materialized from the hidden corners of the lab. Rough hands grabbed at arm and waist, wrenching the would-be lovers apart. Struggling was futile, the shock of Victor's treachery sapped their strength like a leech to blood. Victor, don't do this. It's not too late to stop, Dr. Grant pleaded, even his metal cuffs clamped cold around his wrists. Too late, Victor chuckled, the sound devoid of any warmth that may have once held. My dear doctor, it's only just beginning. Enjoy your front row seat to revolution. As the captors dragged them away, Dr. Grant's gaze locked with Rebecca's, a silent vow passing between them. Betrayal might have captured them, but it wouldn't claim their spirits. Not while a breath remained to fight the darkness that Victor Alvarez had embraced. The cold, stark room where Dr. Leo Grant found himself bound to a chair seemed to shrink with each passing second, the air growing thin as panic clawed at his throat. With every shallow breath, the memories of Victor's malevolent scheme infused the atmosphere, becoming as tangible as the restraints that dug into his wrists. He had to escape, he had to thwart Victor's insidious plan before it came to fruition. His glasses askew on his sweat-dampened face, Dr. Grant surveyed the dimly lit confines for any sign of weakness. A flicker of movement caught his eye detective Rebecca Sanchez was subtly working her hands against her own bindings, her jaw set in steely determination. The click of her handcuffs springing open sounded like a gunshot in the silence. Quietly she whispered, her voice a low thrum of urgency as she moved towards him, deaf fingers making quick work of his restraints. Their eyes met, unspoken resolve passing between them. They couldn't let Victor manipulate the world leaders. It was a power no one man should wield. Where Charlotte Dr. Grant's voice rasped as circulation returned to his limbs. Here came the soft reply from the shadows. Charlotte Wilson emerged, rubbing at her wrists where the rope had left angry red marks. Her usual warmth was replaced by a flinty resolve that belied her kind-hearted nature. I found our exit. Together they crept through the labyrinthine corridors of Victor's hideout, a symphony of pounding hearts and stifled breaths composing their soundtrack. Each corner turned could spell recapture or worse, but their collective will to end the impending calamity bolstered their courage. Victor's playing God, Dr. Grant murmured, the burden of his unwitting contribution to the chaos weighing heavily upon him. We must stop him. Then we'll stop him together, Detective Sanchez vowed, her hand finding his in the dark, her grip an anchor in the storm of uncertainty. No one controls the fate of the world on my watch. And no one does it on mine, Charlotte added. Her fear of being alone transformed into a fierce desire to stand by those who fought for what was right. They emerged into the chill of the night, the stars overhead indifferent witnesses to the drama unfolding beneath them. As they fled the clutches of Victor Alvarez's twisted sanctuary, the trio made a silent pledge they would dismantle his empire of manipulation, brick by brick if necessary. For in that moment, beneath the celestial canvas, they were not just fugitives, they were guardians of free will, defenders against a future ruled by a single man's iron whim. The mission had begun. Dr. Grant's heart thundered against his chest, a relentless drum echoing the chaos around them as they navigated the maze of Victor's organization. Detective Sanchez's eyes darted back and forth, scanning for the unseen threats that lurked in the steel-gray shadows of the industrial complex they had infiltrated. Keep moving, she whispered, her voice a razor-sharp command that sliced through the silence. Charlotte clung to the doctor's arm, her breaths coming in short, sharp gasps as they edged along a narrow catwalk suspended over a seemingly bottomless chasm. Below, the bowels of the facility rumbled with activity the hum of machinery and the muffled commands of Victor's loyalists conducting their sinister work. The trio could almost feel the invisible tendrils of control reaching out from this place, seeking world leaders to ensnare in Victor's web. They ducked into a dim alcove just as a patrol marched past, boots thudding ominously on the metal grating. Dr. Grant's mind raced, each footfall resonating with the dire consequences should they fail. 
Their presence here was an act of defiance, a declaration of war against the looming specter of global manipulation. God, he's close, Charlotte breathed, her eyes wide with the realization that Victor's influence was more extensive than they feared. Too close, Dr. Grant agreed, his voice barely audible. He was acutely aware of the ticking clock, the narrowing window to dismantle the power structure before Victor could enact his final play. Suddenly, a door burst open and Victor himself stood there, his figure framed by the harsh artificial light of the corridor behind him. His dark eyes locked onto Dr. Grant's, and his lips curled into a sardonic smile. Leo Victor said, his voice deceptively warm. You've come to join the party? Or to confess your sins? The air crackled with tension, every muscle in Dr. Grant's body coiled tight. A secret one buried deep within the recesses of his own history linked him to this man a secret that now threatened to unravel under Victor's piercing gaze. Victor, your plans end here, Dr. Grant stated, though his resolve wavered under the weight of his concealed truth. Ah, but Leo Victor replied, stepping forward, his grin widening, don't you see? You're part of the reason my plans exist at all. Your experiments, those little forays into the human psyche, they paved the way for what's to come. Detective Sanchez stiffened beside him and Charlotte's grip tightened. The revelation hit them like a physical blow, the connection between Dr. Grant's past research and Victor's machinations laid bare. Victor Dr. Grant began, his voice faltering, whatever I did, it wasn't meant for this. Not for control, not for power. Intentions, Leo Victor scoffed, shaking his head. It's results that shape the world. And your results, my friend, they've been quite inspirational. The standoff hung heavy in the air, Dr. Grant's secret exposed, the lines drawn in the battle for humanity's autonomy and as the group braced themselves for what was to come, the mission took on a gravity they had never anticipated a fight against a monster of their own inadvertent creation. Dr. Grant's heart raced as he paced the dimly lit room, his mind a tempest of regret and resolve. The sterile scent of old concrete mingled with the musty air of fitting atmosphere for unearthing past sins. He halted mid-stride, fingers pinching the bridge of his nose, the spectacles in his other hand trembling slightly. Years ago, he began, voice barely above a whisper, I delved into the depths of human cognition, seeking to alleviate suffering as words cut through the silence, painting a stark contrast against the shadowed walls. My research. It was meant to help those trapped by their own minds. Detective Sanchez leaned forward, her intense gaze urging him on, while Charlotte remained motionless, absorbing every painful admission. Breakthroughs were made, yes, but never without cost, Dr. Grant continued, a bitter edge creeping into his tone. The technology, my technology, it was twisted after it left my hands, repurposed for control, for domination. A single fluorescent bulb flickered overhead, casting a relentless, ghostly pulse over the scene. Dr. Grant's graying hair seemed to absorb the eerie light, framing his face in an aura of grim determination. Victor, he saw potential where I saw peril, my reluctance to push boundaries, ethical lines I wouldn't cross, they were merely obstacles for him to overcome. Detective Sanchez's jaw clenched, her instincts as an enforcer of justice wrestling with the revelation before her. Victor manipulated my work, turned healing into harm, Dr. Grant said, his voice now steady, resolute, and I, I am complicit in this nightmare. Resigned to his share of the blame, he looked up, eyes fierce behind their glassy shield but I will not stand idle while he carves a path of tyranny with tools I forged. I will dismantle this abomination, piece by piece, even if it consumes me. Charlotte's hand found his, her grip a silent vow of solidarity, while Detective Sanchez nodded, her expression hardening into a steely resolve. Then let's begin, she uttered, her words slicing through the tension like a knife. We end Victor's reign, and we end it now. Their pack sealed in the cold room, they moved as one, a trio bound by a shared mission to uproot a conspiracy that had grown from the seeds of one man's haunted past. The air in the control room was electric, charged with an undercurrent of impending cataclysm, as Victor Alvarez stood like an orchestrator before the crescendo of his greatest symphony. His eyes, dark pools of ambition, were fixed on the bank of monitors that displayed the live feed from the United Nations Assembly. The world leaders sat like chess pieces on the global stage, unaware they were pawns in Victor's grand game. Initiate protocol V. Victor commanded, his voice a velvet hammer that drove home the final nail in the coffin of free will. Technicians scrambled at their consoles, fingers dancing over keys with the urgency of soldiers in the trenches. 
There was a palpable shift in the atmosphere when the command was executed a silent herald of chaos to come. On screen, the President of the United States rose to speak, his posture rigid with authority and confidence. But Victor knew better he had usurped that authority, hijacked that confidence. Watch closely, Victor whispered to himself, a predatory smile creeping across his face. This is the moment everything changes. As the president began to speak, the words that tumbled from his lips were not his own. They were Victor's, meticulously crafted sentences designed to sow discord and fracture alliances. The leader's voice remained steady, but his eyes betrayed a flicker of confusion, a subtle glint of a soul screaming from the depths of its imprisonment. Around the globe, reactions were instantaneous. Stock markets plummeted, protests erupted, and military forces were put on high alert. The world teetered on the brink, tottering towards an abyss of disorder. Beautiful Victor murmured, drinking in the sight of his machinations unfolding. This was his masterpiece, a world painted in shades of turmoil by his hand alone. He stood unflinching as the architect of anarchy, watching as the foundations of geopolitical stability crumbled under the weight of his will. In the heart of chaos, Victor Alvarez found his calm. He was the eye of the storm he had conjured, serene and sovereign, the master of minds and the harbinger of a new era one shaped by his design. The world outside the armored vehicle was a blur of chaos, but inside the silent defeat was suffocating. Dr. Leo Grant felt the weight of the cold metal cuffs on his wrists as they clinked against one another, each rattle a reminder of their failure. The thick lenses of his glasses magnified the despair in his eyes, reflecting the image of Detective Rebecca Sanchez and Charlotte Wilson across from him, equally shackled. Damn it, Sanchez muttered under her breath, her jaw clenched with frustration that couldn't bend steel or break free from their predicament. Her short curls were damp against her forehead, remnants of the struggle that had led them here to this moment of capture. Her spirit, usually ablaze with resilient fire, now flickered in the gloom, struggling to find any remaining oxygen in the stifling air of defeat. Charlotte, whose sunny disposition had often been their beacon, now sat shrouded in a storm of helplessness. Her long, blonde hair, once vibrant and full of life, lay limp and defeated around her shoulders. She looked at her companions through misty eyes, her inner turmoil threatening to spill over like the tears she fought to hold back. Is this it? Is this how it ends? Charlotte's voice was a fragile whisper, barely breaking the tension that filled the confined space. Victor has us outmaneuvered at every turn Grant admitted, the words tasting bitter on his tongue. He had always believed in the healing power of understanding, the strength of the human mind. But facing the grim reality, he questioned if his lifelong pursuit was a mere castle built on sand, now washing away in the tide of Victor's ruthless ambition. Every leader, every government, they're all puppets now. And what are we Sanchez's eyes were dark mirrors reflecting a world turned upside down. Just three more captives in his game. Maybe we were wrong to think we could stop him, Charlotte murmured the fear of abandonment now trivial in the shadow of global catastrophe. Grant searched within himself for the wisdom that had guided countless troubled souls, but it eluded him, leaving behind an echoing void. Had his secret a past mistake cloaked in silence somehow led him here? Was this the price of his hidden guilt? Rebecca, we've always known the risks, Grant finally said, his voice steady despite the tremor of doubt that quaked his core. You've bent the rules to keep people safe, but now in the face of such omnipotence. Rules Sanchez interjected sharply. There are no rules, not anymore. Not against someone who can rewrite reality with a word or fierceness belied the creeping sense of powerlessness that threatened to extinguish her resolve. Then what do we do, Charlotte asked, her plea hanging in the air, unanswered. Survive, Sanchez responded, a spark of defiance glinting in her gaze. We survive and we never stop fighting. Even if it's hopeless, Charlotte pressed, searching their faces for a shred of reassurance. Especially then, Grant whispered, feeling the embers of his conviction stirring faintly within the ashes. Because that's when our choices matter most. The vehicle jolted to a stop, throwing them against the cold walls of their mobile prison. Outside, the muffled sounds of Victor's new world order echoed, a symphony of discordance and dread. Inside, three hearts beat in defiant synchrony clinging to a sliver of hope in a world where darkness reigned supreme. The shadows cast by the flickering light bulb in their dim cell danced across Dr. Grant's face as he paced like a caged animal, his thoughts racing to find an escape that didn't exist. 
Detective Sanchez leaned against the damp concrete wall, eyes closed, breathing deep and steady as steel blade sheathed and calm. Their captor's footsteps reverberated down the corridor, a drumbeat of impending doom. Victor's going to come for us soon, Grant said, voice tinged with a fatalistic certainty. We need to be ready. Ready Charlotte's voice cracked slightly, but her hands were steady surprisingly so. She had been quiet since the doors slammed shut on them, her mind a whirlwind of fear and resolve. Now she looked up, and the fluorescent light caught in her pale blue eyes, igniting a spark that seemed incongruous with the despair that had cloaked them all. Ready for what? He's won, hasn't he? Sanchez opened her eyes, studying Charlotte with a piercing gaze. Unless you have a trick up your sleeve we don't know about. Actually, Charlotte began, hesitance threading through her tone, I might have something. Grant stopped pacing, turning to face her, hope flaring briefly before skepticism doused it. Charlotte, now's not the time for false hope. It's not false, Charlotte insisted, pushing herself off the ground. The others watched as she reached into the lining of her jacket, fingers deftly finding a hidden seam. She pulled out a small, metallic device no larger than a matchbox, intricate circuitry etched into its surface. Since I joined the team I've been working on this, she confessed, cradling the countermeasure in her trembling hands. I knew Victor was reckless, that we were always one step behind. So I started building. A failsafe. Is that Grant's question hung incomplete, disbelief warring with the burgeoning resurgence of determination in his chest. An anti-mind control device. Yes, Charlotte said, the words pouring out in a rush. It should disrupt the signals, render his technology ineffective. But it's untested, and I only managed to make one before. Her voice trailed off as the weight of their predicament pressed down upon them once more. Damn, Charlotte Sanchez breathed out, a rare smile flickering across her stern features. You're full of surprises. Can it work? Grant stepped closer, inspecting the device as if it held the key to their salvation. And perhaps it did. I don't know, Charlotte admitted, biting her lip. Her fear of abandonment had always pushed her to prepare for the worst, to cling to some form of control in the chaos. This device was the embodiment of that desperate need. But it's our best shot. Then we'll use it, Sanchez said, determination hardening her voice. We'll use it and end Victor's reign before it truly begins. As they clustered around the tiny beacon of hope in Charlotte's palm, the air between them shifted, charged with a renewed sense of purpose. The three of them, bound by their shared plight, felt a silent vow pass among them. They would fight. They would survive. And now, thanks to Charlotte's secret labor, they had a chance to turn the tide against the darkness that threatened to engulf the world. Dr. Grant's eyes snapped open to darkness. The foul smell of his cell flooded his nostrils as he gasped for air. How long had he been unconscious? Minutes? Hours? He couldn't tell. With a grunt, he pushed himself up from the cold concrete floor. Every muscle in his body screamed in protest, but he forced himself to stand. He had to get out of this hellhole. In the corner, Detective Sanchez stirred, letting out a soft moan. Dr. Grant rushed over to help her up. Rebecca, are you all right? He asked urgently. She coughed and blinked, disoriented. Leo, what happened? Victor drugged us. We're trapped, his voice was grim. Sanchez's eyes widened in alarm as the memories came flooding back. She jumped to her feet, fists clenched. That bastard. When I get my hands on him, We'll make him pay, Dr. Grant assured, placing a gentle hand on her shoulder. But first, we need to focus on escaping. A soft whimper drew their attention to the opposite corner, where Charlotte lay crumpled on the ground. Sanchez hurried over and helped her up. Oh, thank God, you're both here, Charlotte cried, throwing her arms around them. Dr. Grant warmly returned the embrace. They were all together, beaten but unbroken. Charlotte, listen to me, he said firmly. I need you to be brave. We're getting out of here, I promise. Do you still have the countermeasure? Charlotte's hand went to the pocket of her skirt. Her fingers closed around the small metal device that could be their salvation. She nodded, determination shining in her eyes. Good, Dr. Grant said. It's time we turn the tables on Victor. Sanchez cracked her knuckles, a fierce look on her face. Let's do this. They joined hands, drawing strength from one another. United in purpose, the three captives steeled themselves for the fight ahead. 
the countermeasure just might give them the edge they needed. Dr. Grant allowed himself a small smile. Victor had tried to break them, but he had only made them stronger. Now they would make him pay. Dr. Grant, Detective Sanchez, and Charlotte moved swiftly and silently through the dark corridors of Victor's facility. Adrenaline pumped through their veins as they approached the control room where their nemesis awaited. Dr. Grant motioned for them to stop outside a set of heavy double doors. He pressed his ear against the cold metal surface, listening intently. The sound of fingers tapping rapidly on a keyboard could be heard from within. He's in there, Dr. Grant whispered. Get ready. Sanchez drew her gun, holding it steadily in both hands. Charlotte gripped the countermeasure, her heart pounding. With a deep breath, Dr. Grant threw open the doors. Victor spun around in surprise, rising from his chair. His shock quickly turned to a smug grin. Well, well. My guests of honor have arrived, he purred. To what do I owe the pleasure? It's over, Victor, Dr. Grant declared. We're shutting this place down. Victor laughed coldly. I'm afraid you won't get very far. My associates will be here any moment to escort you back to your cells. Your mind tricks won't work this time, Sanchez snarled, training her gun on him. Dr. Grant stepped forward, holding Victor's gaze. A battle of wills was about to unfold. The fate of humanity hung in the balance. Dr. Grant stared intensely into Victor's dark, cunning eyes. This was the moment he had been preparing for. Your reign of terror ends now, Dr. Grant said calmly. I know how your technology works. I can override your control. Victor's grin faded slightly. He glanced at the countermeasure in Charlotte's hands. That little toy won't stop me, he scoffed. But there was an edge of doubt in his voice. This is no toy, Dr. Grant replied. You underestimate the power of human connection and empathy, something you know nothing about. Dr. Grant stepped closer. Victor backed up involuntarily. It's over, Victor, Dr. Grant said gently. It's time to let go of your anger and need for control. For a moment, Victor's sinister facade seemed to crack. Dr. Grant thought he saw a flicker of humanity in those cold eyes, but then it was gone. Victor lunged for the keyboard, attempting to trigger the mind control signal. Sanchez fired a warning shot, stopping him short. Don't try it, she growled. Dr. Grant placed a hand on Victor's shoulder. You can still make this right, he urged. Shut it all down. Free those under your influence. It's the only way forward. Victor hesitated, conflicting emotions playing across his face. Finally, he slumped down, defeated. Very well, he conceded softly. I will deactivate the signal. Dr. Grant nodded, relief flooding through him. They had one. Three months later. Dr. Grant sat in his office, reviewing notes from his morning appointments. Despite everything that had happened, he was glad to be back in his familiar leather chair, helping people through their mental health struggles. After the ordeal with Victor, Dr. Grant had started integrating lessons from his experience into his psychiatry practice. He now had an even deeper understanding of how trauma and manipulation could warp someone's mind. This enabled him to connect better with patients and guide them toward growth and healing. Dr. Grant smiled as he thought of Detective Sanchez. As he predicted, she had been promoted for her integral role in bringing down Victor's organization. The new position kept her busy, but they still managed the occasional lunch date to catch up. Dr. Grant was proud of how far his friend had come in balancing her relentless drive for justice with greater patience and empathy. His gaze shifted to a framed photo on his desk of Charlotte at the opening of her new research institute. Charlotte's warmth and idealism had been vital in ensuring the mind control technology was repurposed for good rather than destroyed. The Lightwell Institute now pioneered innovative projects aimed at improving mental health and human connection. Dr. Grant leaned back in his chair, feeling content. The future looked bright for all of them. Their shared determination gave him hope that humanity could overcome darkness as long as there were people willing to fight for the light. Thanks for listening to this story. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, be sure to leave it a like and subscribe.